The superior and inferior mesenteric arteries are pretty simple. For the most part, they just send branching, multiply anastomosing vessels into the mesentery and supply long stretches of intestines and colon. That's an oversimplification, but neither one can really compare to the complexity of the celiac trunk, which, hint hint, is also the most important for step one by far. Now the celiac artery is really just a tiny little nubbin that travels for less than a centimeter before dividing up into three major arteries. The left gastric heads towards the esophagus and lesser curvature, the common hepatic heads right towards the liver, duodenum, and head of the pancreas, and the splenic artery heads towards the spleen and body and tail of the pancreas. Each one of these, by the way, plays a very important role in the blood supply of the stomach. The left gastric artery is the simplest. This artery gives off a small branch to the lower esophagus that ascends into the thorax via the esophageal hiatus, but the main portion enters the gastrohepatic ligament to become part of the arterial anastomosis on the lesser curvature of the stomach. Now, the splenic artery is retroperitoneal for most of its course, and along the way, it supplies the body and tail of the pancreas, but it emerges in the splenorenal ligament to supply the spleen. Distally, it's also a major player in the blood supply of the stomach, giving rise to the short gastric arteries that supply the fundus, and the left gastroepiploic artery that makes up half of the anastomosis on the greater curvature of the stomach. The most complexicated of these by far is the common hepatic artery, and it's really got two trunks, I guess you could call them. The first is the gastroduodenal, heading inferiorly, and the second is the proper hepatic artery, heading superiorly. Now, y'all should know this one. Which ligament does the proper hepatic artery run through? The proper hepatic artery is part of the famous portal triad, and it runs alongside the portal vein and common bile duct through the hepatoduodenal ligament. Interesting fact, if you are expecting a larger blood supply, given that the liver is freaking massive, consider the fact that the hepatic artery is really only there to increase the oxygen concentration. The portal vein, which also supplies an influx of blood to the liver, carries about 80% of the liver's blood supply, and a surprising 50% of the oxygen. Now the main branch of the proper hepatic you should know about is the right gastric artery, which anastomoses with the left in the lesser curvature. The gastroduodenal continues behind the duodenum and eventually emerges to become the right gastroepiploic artery at the greater curvature of the stomach. On its way, it lets off two important branches, the anterior and posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal arteries, so named because they run anterior and posterior to the pancreas respectively. Now those names might be a mouthful, but the good news is that the names are specific enough to where the words alone should tell you exactly where these arteries are, and what two organs they supply. Those two anastomose with the superior mesenteric artery by following the curve of the duodenum straight to the SMA, although in the process, their names change to anterior, posterior, inferior pancreatic duodenal arteries as soon as they reach the third part of the duodenum. Man, those names get tiring. And that's it for the arteries, guys. Now, for those of you who get confused by the tangled jumble of arteries on this picture, well, it pains me to do this, but here's a schematic that details the connection between the different branches of the celiac. The reason I hate doing this is because this method only allows you to memorize the path to a certain vessel, like a set of directions to get to someone's house. It tells you nothing, however, about the anatomic relationships between the organs and blood vessels, so it's important to understand the spatial diagram as well. For now, though, let's check out your knowledge of GI arteries by trying on a flash quiz for size. First question requires a bit of spatial reasoning, so pause the video if you need some time to think about it. Your job is to trace two paths from the descending aorta to the stomach. Now we went over a total of five, so if you like a challenge, try to get all five. So this is an awesome way to see how well you know the celiac, because every single major branch of the celiac artery supplies the stomach in one way or another. The left gastric is the most direct route to the stomach. The splenic artery has two branches, the short gastrics to the fundus, and the left gastroepiploic at the greater curvature. The common hepatic artery is the origin of both right-sided branches to the stomach. The right gastric artery on the lesser curvature branches off the proper hepatic, and the right gastroepiploic comes from the gastroduodenal artery. If you're ever trying to quiz yourself on celiac distribution, by the way, try to remember all five paths to the stomach. That'll leave you covered pretty well. And that's it for the celiac trunk. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below, and uh, if you didn't, leave me a comment.